This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. Stacy, what do you do for a living, Stacy? I work for a Christian publishing company. If there's one thing I can't stand. <laughs> Listen up, slap nuts. Sit down, dummy, I'm talking. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Oh, Wendy. You fat! You f***ing <laughs> numpty! What are you laughing at, <laughs> face? Shut your mouth. The cream of the crop! Nobody does it better! Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RVT Entertainment on TheBrokenInfinite.com, Podomite.com, my iTunes, and wherever else you can be fine is fine audio recording and live on RVT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel. That's uh, twitch.tv slash RBT Entertainment, by the way. We talk about fresh wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this, the celebration of the WrestleCast's 10th year of production. My name is Matty J. That is TWK. The spiders come side by side. Two by two and night by night. Who was food and who was thrown away? New song stuck in your head? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> hell of a way to celebrate it, uh, an anniversary. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Happy 10 years, Maddie J. You've been doing this for 10 years. I've been doing this for seven. So, just about. Yeah, just about seven, yeah. Yeah, because I came in around 2012. Yeah. In 2012, that's why I came into this whole business of WrestleCast-ness. <laughs> and now I'm here with you, stuck, can't go anywhere, the door's locked. I know, uh, the door's unlocked. You, you just locked yourself in. Because I don't want to leave. There you go. Because <laughs> you're happy here. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <Happy>. <laughs> <laughs> people in the people in the chat congrats manny congrats 10 10 10 ready go says chair shot ow 10 oh wait he just he almost killed cody rose with that chair whoops worth it yeah it'll be worth it at all out anyway <laughs> but that's another show for another day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I am literally hours away from packing this laptop and, uh, and my Chromebook, because I'm going to be broke, and the Switch, and about eh, four or five days worth of clothes. I'm about to take a, a train ride to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where the subject of tonight's third segment will be taking place. My very first WWE pay-per-view will be SummerSlam 2019. Long overdue is... No, is, no, is Maddie, a, that's not your first WWE pay-per-view. Your first WWE pay-per-view will be NXT TakeOver Toronto. That's very true. And that's even better news. But, you know, if we're talking WWE TakeOver... Uh, I don't, do they even count TakeOver as a pay-per-view? Do they not? They're, 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 we need clarification on that. I know SummerSlam is a pay-per-view and it's available through pay-per-view provider. I know that. But I, I, I'm SummerSlam weekend. It, it, holy shit. I, I'm, it has been a very interesting summer to get to this point. But I'm finally happy to be at this point. Let's just put it that way. And uh, to be at this point right now, and then and that, tomorrow I'll be in Toronto. I'm, I'm going to be at, uh, you know, Seneca College. I'm going to put my stuff down, and then I'm going to Uber my way to downtown at the epicenter of professional wrestling for the next four days. 
It is a very interesting feeling indeed. I'll, I will say this. There is a part of me that wishes I had more full-time employment so I could have time, that more time, you know, more free time or more weekend time or more, you know, time, I guess. Or more time off because some of the wrestling, some of the ports of the, of the independent wrestling shows from yesterday and today alone, my God. Those of you in Toronto who are, who are listening to this, I'm jealous of all of y'all. Got time, but you ain't got time for me. Got time, but you ain't got time for me. Yeah. Ain't got time for me. Yeah. <laughs> T-Dubs, T-Dubs listened to some new knot. Well, that's Life of Agony from like 20 years ago. Oh, Slipknot. Yeah, that, I was saying Slipknot earlier, but that was Life of Agony. This ah. time. This time! This time! Now, I should point out, I, I, my train leaves at six at uh, 8 o'clock, and I should be getting into town at around 1 o'clock, just about. So I don't know if I'll even get a chance to even peruse an independent wrestling, which sucks. But I, if I can, I know the one show I can do will be the new o, will, will be the second OWE in Toronto show. Oh, good. And see we'll, some we'll we'll be fancy, plugging the crap uh, out of that because of our friend Nuclear Convoy has been he's been helping out with 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 the promotion of that. So we are helping him in that as well. But you'll if, see some kung fu wrestling. Da, 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 da. He's not kidding. Something it's, something fighting. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he's not kidding. He's like kung fu wrestling. There are some kung fu fighters in, in that in that league it's not even kidding he's not kidding yeah well that yeah uh for those not in the know of the origins of chinese wrestling they literally got like movie martial artists and stunt coordinators like all were hired by all these different companies to start all these different promotions because well where else are you going to start when you're in china really and of course this is all put in much more succinctly in our buddy nuclear convoys uh, blogs. You can go visit his website yeah. for that. You can get a full rundown of the history of Pearl Saint China. It's absolutely fascinating. It's a must read. And I don't read shit, but I read that. I read that too. And I'll tell you, if you don't want to read, search OWE or Oriental Wrestling Entertainment on YouTube. There are some full shows in there legally available, and some of the spots are mind-blowing. So I'm gonna leave that. I will. I will let you explore yourself if you're not in, in within the Toronto area to enjoy the. This is one hell of a weekend for wrestling too, because I'm going to one thing. But if you're not allowed, if you're not able to do so, like I am, you are gonna be fucking either fucking busy or fucking dead or both. I don't know. We'll get to to the stuff because. You got you got Toronto stuff. You got your your takeovers, your 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 SummerSlam, your Raw, your SmackDown, and all of that. Of course, Progress is in Toronto. Smash is in Toronto. Ring of Honor is oh the poor bastards. Oh boy, oh boy, they can't even fill what's left of, the, of Maple Leaf Gardens. T Dub, I, I actually shared the picture of uh of that uh of that uh, of that uh, venue for uh, Ring of Honor's uh, Summer Supercard show, and it's. Ugh. You would think that MSG show would help him out. It it's obviously done some harm, but we'll get to that. But not only that, uh, the the uh, the um the, the the finals of G One Climax Twenty Nine is happening this weekend, which I will catch up on. At one point, I'm actually all caught up to. The last three days, but I, I'm not going to have time to watch those last three days. Until I get home. And I might even have time to do that, because we have a, a show, instead of doing Friday, because Friday I'm going to fight it back nine, we're going to have to do this show, the show on Wednesday. And matter of fact, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say that right now, before we get to the festivities... Next week will not be live on Friday because of that. I will be at Fighting Back 9 because, duh, and Cody, duh. 
However, we've arranged, uh, since we can't do it on Thursday because of Ranger Recap, we're going to do th things on Wednesday. So, guess what, T-Dub? It's May with Ring of Honor all over again. It's literally, <laughs> it's literally, I'll be home, it's, uh, except I won't be going to work, obviously. I'll actually have time to actually rest and get a quick nap, but not too much because I'm literally preparing... I'll be preparing a show to do on Wednesday. And by the way, for those wondering at what time, it will be Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're not going to start at 10 because we'd be stupid. Plus, most of you are available at 9 anyway. So we'll be starting the show at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this on twitch.tv slash RBT Entertainment. And I'll plug that again. Nine, 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 nine. I'll be plugging that again a little later in the program in case you forget. That being said, that's an, uh, enough of the brick and brack. There is stuff to talk about, and I'm pretty sure Tito wants to talk news. So, Club of the Week time. Now, AEW. That's a good way to start, right? AEW, that they have a new women's championship. They announced that they will crown their new women's championship at, uh, at the very first AEW on TNT program, which is tentatively called Wednesday Night Dynamite. As of late, it is not as of yet. It is not official, but we know it'll air on that fateful October evening, and the old crown of women's champion. Now, how? Of course, you're wondering how are they going to, you know, get that work, and how they get it determined. Well, on this week's road to a, to all out, they explained such a thing, and they had Brandy Rhodes explain what's going on, including. Revealing some of the uh, uh, women's uh, wrestlers that will be participating in, sa in said thing that's about to be on the clip. And uh, the first one they announced um, could be a game changer. Take a listen. Oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I, I'm supposed to hit this button. There we go. Now take a listen. How do we go about determining who's first in line for a shot at the championship? Well, I've got good news. The Casino Battle Royale is back, baby, and the rules are just the same. Each wrestler has selected a card from a special deck. The suit of card they selected determines their group. Every three minutes, we shuffle the deck to see which suit comes up. After all suits have been exhausted, the wrestler who drew the Joker card will be the last to enter. Eliminations occur when a wrestler has gone over the top rope and both feet have hit the floor. So the stakes are high. Who's going to be competing for the first shot at the Women's World Championship? Will it be Nyla Rose? Will it be Dr. Britt Baker? Will it be Yuka Sakazaki? Will it be Allie? Or will it be me? As you know, to complete the Casino Battle Royale, we need 21 participants and there are not 21 women signed to the AEW women's roster, so could it be a complete unknown? Or could it be someone who's one of your favorites that you just don't expect to see? Or could it be her? My name's Teal Piper. I'm the daughter of the late Rowdy Roddy Piper. Growing up with wrestling in my family, it was it's actually a, kind of a strange dynamic because I grew up with a dad that people hated and literally tried to kill on multiple occasions. He kept us very protected and away from it. He was afraid that fans would lash out at us to get to him. It was almost like this stigma in our household where my dad had a huge love for it, but he also was just terrified of like me ever getting involved. So then it was something that I, j I guess my love for it really grew more in my adult years as I got a more respect for performers in general and let alone the athleticism it takes. To me it just felt wasteful to take all, everything I grew up with and everything he taught me and all my own personal drives and experiences and not do what I wanted to do. I'm so inspired by the women of AEW and the women just in professional wrestling over the years and where it's at now is very exciting and a big reason as to why I finally made the leap into the industry. It's also a way for me to reconnect with him and a way to get closer to him and I guess keep him around. I 
feels like a good one. Trust me. <laughs> I bet they're all out of answers. But where I come from, we're taught to change the questions. It's time to pay the piper. Teal Piper. So well, for those wondering, by the way, thank you to Reniko for uh, subscribing with Twitch Prime. Much appreciated. Teal Piper. I.E. Ariel Toombs. I.E. the real wife daughter of Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's legit. That's shoot. Now, if this, this is one of those things where this could be a diamond in rough. If they get Teal Piper and she becomes a huge star, that's a huge coup for AEW just for picking her up. Because you know how WWE likes having those second and third generation wrestlers. Oh, they, yeah. They could get one over on, on the Fed, or over on Vince. That's huge. If that if she becomes a big star with AEW, that's huge. That's something WWE does not have as massive. Now, now unfortunately, that's only just a possibility. Let's let's it hope is a possibility. She does not turn. Let's hope that she does not turn to somebody like Lacey Von Erich or Garrett Bischoff. Yeah, this is this could be this could go the whole other way here. I'm just saying, if she is good and she turns big, a big star in this industry, that is a huge get for 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 uh, for AEW. Now, I tried to get at least some info on Teal Piper wrestling, but goodness me, I couldn't find jack shit. I'm pretty sure this is her debut match. This could be her debut match, so <laughs> I knock on wood on this one. I knock on wood. Who knows what's going to happen? All I'm, all I'm going to say is, Interesting pick. Now, the other two, they announced two more, and you saw the thing uh, earlier on Facebook, I'm sure. But uh, they got uh, Eva Nice, freshly released from uh, for, from her Lucha Underground Hill, and Jazz. The bitch is back. Indeed. It, it very much indeed. So... And by the way, uh, bald and nice mask. Well, she is from New Orleans. I, I, I got to, I got to admit, I like it. I like it. I look forward to seeing an entrance with it. That's all I'm gonna say there. That uh, so people is uh, people. Why jazz? I mean, have you seen jazz lately? She's wrestled for a deal for the National Wrestling Alliance, and she's still, she can still go. So, this is some interesting developments. If I'm going to say there. Yeah, uh, their women's division is finally starting to pick up because while they did have some feature matches here and there, it did feel like they could use more bodies. Now we're finally getting those bodies. Can't wait to see more. And you want more developments, Matty J? More developments? Sure. Sure. Coming this fall, it is... The Wednesday Night Wars! Yeah, so, yeah, speaking of Wednesdays, uh, it's been, I, I guess we could say official? Or unofficially official? It's all but official. It's, all we're really missing at this point is for the ink to gum, is for ink to paper. That's all we're missing, pen to paper. Basically, Fox is, is going in on it. It's not even a WWE call. This is literally Fox saying... We want NXT on Fox Sports 1 or FS1. And rumor has it they're going from one to two hours. Live each week. It'll be interesting to see how much NXT changes with it going from one to two hours. Because one of the things that's always been in its favor is the fact that it is only one hour. So they only have to put so much into each episode. And they can make you wait a week 
to see some people you normally would over, might be overly exposed. Yeah, this they do have a deep enough roster, especially using uh, if they're if it's going to stay in developmental only. They have a deep enough roster, especially with the performance center. There are some unused talent from TV and uh, and takeovers that they could easily pull off a two hour show. But the the one thing that that does concern me though is live. That's like the one concerning like. Free tape, two hours, fair enough. They they can adjust, but live? Ooh, that's that's my biggest concern. Because now you got to write a, a sh- instead of writing for three or four shows every let's say call it like three to four weeks. Now you got to do a show each uh, each week, and if it's going to be live on network TV, the inevitable question that becomes. How much control will Vince have? Or how much control will Triple H have thanks to Vince? I'm hoping that the control dynamic stays the same and Vince stays away. Yeah. That would be the ideal and the only good option in this Vince, case. you keep your grubby hands off of Johnny Gargano, you bastard. Get your dirty hands off my NXT, you son of a bitch. Wait, hold on. I can't do Vince. I can't do Vince, uh, you're going to take your hands off uh, my project. Uh. I, I can only imagine what he would do with some of these people. Like, oh. He Ugh. will. I will tell you this right now. He will fuck up the Velveteen Dream. Oh, not, no. Not if. No. Not if. I know. I hate saying it. But we know we love because we both love the Velveteen Dream. He's so good. He's so goddamn good. But the minute Vince touches Velveteen Dream, the Velveteen Dream is fucked. Uh, anyway, so. So let's get off the negative shit. It's going to be still... Wednesday Wars. <laughs> and I just like to. Can we. To can say can we stop from... calling it a. Okay. Yes, it, this is obviously... This is Fox saying, let's put them on Wednesday. And they happen to be on Wednesday. But can we not call it a fucking war? It is a war. God damn it's it. It's NXT versus AEW. They're both going to be on at the exact same times. What else do you call that? Fuck. And you think they're not going to throw cheap shots at each other? They're going to get really down and dirty, man. This is a fucking war. The last time there was a war, we got Viagra on a pole matches. Do you want Viagra on a pole matches? Because that's how you get Viagra on a pole matches. And as you say that, Crunchman enters the room. How you doing? (laughs) Hey, <laughs> Crutch Man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I personally, I'll be watching AEW Live. I'll watch NXT on DVR later. That's I think how that's probably what I'm going to be doing as well. Because thankfully I have DVR and I can just, you know, record NXT and then just watch AEW Live. There you go. that is what I'm going to be fully invested in. That's good. that's good. that's gonna be a good AEW, that's gonna be a good three to three and a half hours. I mean, you got to remove the ads, of course. Yes. And speaking of AEW, they announced C number two and C number three for their tapings for their broadcast schedule. Boston City two and C three runs with Kelly is Philly. So Chicago, Boston, Philly. Now, oh no, yeah, Boston, Philly. I got the I got. No, it's not Chicago. It's. DC, oh, okay. Washington, DC, Philly. Yeah, DC, Boston, Philly. Okay, yeah, and then of course Chicago, and uh, you know, at the end of the month. Now people are thinking, "Oh, that's safe. That's safe. Maybe, but this is a new company. Keeping it safe is not a bad idea here, at least in location wise. Especially when you want to really." really uh, sell out those venues for your first set TV broadcasts. You want those to look especially good. Because not everyone's going to be able to travel to your city, so you got you got to plan logistically here. That, and you want those TV executives 
to be happy with your product. And the best way to do that, get those butts into those seats. And yep. those cities are especially good at that. And they're not and they're not going for the big build for the bigger building. Obviously, DC it's the big building and they've obviously sold it out. But for Boston and Philly, they're not exactly going for the biggest buildings available. They're going for reason reasonably sized buildings. Some people would say underselling, but then again, logistically, not everyone's available able to travel that week. That and selling out a 5,000 seat venue is a lot better than getting 8,000 people in a 20,000 venue. It's, yeah, it's one of those cases. Even a, a sellout building, a sold out building is a sold out building no matter what the size. And it just looks better on television. It just does. Compared to, let's say, what Ring of Honor's got going on tonight, where it unfortunately is not looking that good, which is shocking because they're in Toronto during a WWE weekend. So you would think, you, think you would deal. think, this is one, yeah, I shared this with, with Tina on Twitter before, about an hour before we went live. I saw that building. For those wondering, Mattamy, uh, the Mattamy Center, that's the former Maple Leaf Gardens. So that's smack dab downtown. So seeing that, that that's nearly, that, yeah, that was nearly half empty. There I saw that, I, I was, wow. There were so many more empty seats than I was expecting. I was expecting, you know, Rio Vado, they go to Toronto, which has become one of their major cities in recent years, but it's also shocking just how little I, seats they had there. I, yeah, this is one of those. And I was in in Toronto in May when they were doing the, the World of Worlds uh, tour. They didn't sell out either. A lot of the hockey seats were empty. Like, the, the, I, the floor was pretty packed. But the hockey seats, which are normally, like you would say, last year, they've sold out. And I got my ticket back in May thinking they might sell out. I was lucky to get on the floor, but I was like, I was in, I was like, that was still full. I was talking to the fans there. I was like, they, there, there is some concern. And Renico is asking, is Ring of Honor dying? I don't know if they're dying, but I'll, no, t- I'll no, tell you. No, no, but it they are. It does seem like they're on a bit of a decline. They are. And it seems like they're still having trouble recovering since losing the elite. Since losing the elite, a and that bad performance on their ran at the MSG show did not do them do them any favors. Now they're about, and they've just they just broke off from the NWA. Though that was more of a, they the National Wrestling Alliance is ready to do their own TV for uh, for now. So that was yeah, more of a business split than a. Thing unamicable one yeah they're probably doing their own television tapings but billy corgan has yet to reveal what tv it is like all he's saying is hey we're doing tv tapings okay what we're they'll what, do what, tv what tapings in october in atlanta that's all we know but seeing that that thing i'm like <sighs> losing the elite's big but the msg show and they're showing and this is something I've been wanting to ask for the last few weeks, or at least the last couple of months. Is it just me, or is Ring of Honor starting to look like the bad TNA to you? I'm starting to have some of those vibes as far as attendance figures go, because there was a good long period where Impact or Running Show was bigger than they could sell out, and it was just looking really, really sad. And it was also during a time where there just seem to be a lot of departures from the company. And yeah, I am getting just a lot, is, is a lot of vibes. Because... And also, Bully Ray is there! Bully Ray and some of the some of the beautiful people are there, so you look at, you start to look at, and for a while, because of their association with the National Wrestling Alliance, they had James Storm and Eli Drake on Ring of Honor TV. So for the longest time, I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck am I walking? Shaking, Ring of Honor or Impact? There is some obvious confusion there. So something is up. I think that one thing that needs to change is the booking team. At the very least, they need to get Bully Ray out of there. I hate to I hate to disagree, but I have to. Bully's a smart guy, but he is something's not working, and if he's part of part of the problem. There you go. 
what was the guy who brought in Enzo and Cass against Delirious's uh, concerns? There's strike two right there. One, one is strike three going to happen when they have to start canceling shows because of low attendance or low sales figures for tickets? I'm hoping they won't reach that level. I'm really hoping Please. they won't. But it is obviously concerning. Uh, let's see here. And some more concerning news. Uh, according to Figure Four Online, WWE is trying to buy Fight TV, which it's, was, oh no, it's basically the biggest cross promotional pay per view app for pro wrestling and MMA. Now, right, I could tell you that, uh, uh, concern, because some people were looking at. Uh, some uh, so apparently fight responded by saying those rumors are false, but Figure Four Online and Dave Meltzer are talking about this. So it makes me think that something might be happening, but I'm hoping that nothing becomes of this because this will only bring bad news for to pro wrestling because Fight TV is like I said basically the go-to service for a lot of independent pro wrestling companies as well as some MMA companies. Yeah. And WWE buys this. No, this is obviously if this is true, this is obviously Vince trying to fuck with with AEW. But don't even look at it at AEW. AEW will be fine. They'll be fucking over Ring of Honor, Impact, and pretty much ninety percent of indie, independent wrestling promotions worldwide using the, the the damn thing to broadcast their shit. This is bad. Hello. And Rico saying blinks at Twitch. Okay. But, but yeah, I not... totally agree. It's not it's not the greatest. Go ahead. So let's hope that does not happen. I hope that it's just rumor in here saying that's it. Well, do you want to know what's bad news and not rumor or hearsay? What is bad news and not hearsay? WWE continuing their Saudi Arabia deal. <sighs> yeah, they did officialize their next show. And it's probably going to cause hell for their SmackDown show. Because probably this show is going to happen either the day before or the day of SmackDown. So... What the fuck is going on there? Well, you know what? The thought just the thought just occurred to me. You know, let's let's take a look at what's going on uh, over at Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it looks to be a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> it's my only one. It's my one joke. I ain't making fun of Saudi Arabia more than that because that would require effort. And I don't want to waste them on those fuckers. Moving on. Moving on to the identity of Roman Reigns' attacker is Eric Rowan, apparently. Let me get that rubber band band going again. <laughs> All right, moving on. Anyone else expected someone like Brian, maybe? Well, he could have still been Brian, because, no, Eric Rowan is Brian's go-to guy. He's, he's his tag team partner and all that. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm shrugging. I'm like, okay, that, that's a thing. Thanks for fucking the script up, Vince. Again. Yeah, here. Third reportedly, week in a row, he tears like half the fucking show. Yeah, so reportedly he decided to rewrite SmackDown ninety minutes before they went to air. So if the card that we're about to read off from SummerSlam twenty nineteen seems a little off, yeah, there's a reason. God damn it! What do we do for this time? Ah, uh, ah! Uh, set it out! Set it out! 
Zane and 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 who's this guy? It's Alistair Black. Send them both out there. God damn it. We need time. <sighs> Do you want some happy time news? Please. Let's 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 get to some good news. Oni Larkin's Twitter game. Oh, okay. He has been consistently hilarious on Twitter. <laughs> Partially all right. because he always all right. Partially because he always writes in caps. That helps. And here's his late here's one of his latest ones. I am not booked for any meet and greets or public appearances in Toronto. I have only been booked on Sunday to kick ass until then. I will find a park bench to sleep under and prepare for my Okay. Follow up. Some sweet old Toronto lady came up to sit on the bench I was sleeping under and brought me some soup and told me to kick it Gulak's ass. Throw it up! Nice. Also, he posted a Photoshop picture of him given the given uh, his one finger, and the one finger is super long. Oh, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Like, but why is he always yelling on Twitter? Give it? Because, because he's extra. Yeah. I get working the gimmick. That's my only answer. What else you got, pal? Hold on, you need to see this. I, I need to see this. Okay, I need to see this, apparently. The caption reads, Please stop making fun of my finger. It's not nice. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a hell of a buggle finger, I'll tell you that much. And Bugsley says someone should inform Oni that he doesn't have to yell always. Well, yes, he does. That's the only way he knows how to talk. Something tells me someone told them, keep going. I don't know who. Can you show that picture to the stream chat? Well, I fuck up the, the thing so new. Damn it! I know. It's, it's on Instagram, picture. people. It, you can see it. It's on Twitter. It's on Twitter. I'm not sure if he even has an Instagram or not. And in yeah. our final bit of news, I re it's read as thusly. Jay White makes history! Breathe with a switchblade! Okay. Oh, you'll remember how he made history this week, Matty J? How how did he make history? I'm trying to remember now. What happened earlier this week? Who did he face in the G1 climax tournament? That's right! He's he 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 is the man who got who gave John Moxley's first ever New Japan loss. Not loss. Pinfall, pinfall loss. loss. Pinfall loss. Y'all know about that distinction. First Boom. pinfall loss. Yeah. Not just New Japan post WWE loss via pinfall. And he did it 100% yeah. clean. No interference. No tomfoolery. He got no trickery. help from Fredo. He got help. But no, he didn't. No, teed up. Teed he up. was clean in the middle teed of the up. He did teed it up. own He's fair a, Teed up. And teed. Tito, don't make me don't make me yell into the microphone. People have told me not to scream, okay? He got but, help but from he, he got himself. help. He got help, but by Gato. But a win is a win is a win is a win. My monitor was out. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was mine when Yano hit them that alleged low blues. <laughs> Trust me, as far as I'm concerned, it was the cleanest pinfall victory in the history of pro wrestling, and that is what makes Jay White the future of not just New Japan, but pro wrestling. Okay, now take away the game, Fabe. Jay White cheated. What's K Fabe? God damn it. 
for those wondering, T Dub is still is a J White Mark. Green with the switchblade in his new cutthroat era. I think one of glad Okada took the belt back. Yes, you're the only one who's glad. <laughs> well, on this call, maybe, but just in general in wrestling, probably not. He will be champion not. again. He will be champion again. And no, Crutchman says I'm too won't. subtle about being. Crutchman says I'm too subtle about being a Jay White fan. I, I apologize for my subtleness. I know I hide it very much because some people don't respect the Switchblade, but, you know, I, I like to just sprinkle in some references here and there. Just leave some breadcrumbs for people to discover. Well, do I respect Jay White as a wrestler? Yes. As a character? Fuck him. Here's the difference. Rinico is Rinico. I e okay. Rinico Dave's you. Also, so he, he asked me, could you say TWK's nose is brown? No, because that implies drug use, and I'm straight edge. What I am is a provider of the truth. There are many truths in wrestling. One of the truths: Jimmy Jacobs has a far out mind. Seriously, watch this interview with Chris Van Fleet. It's absolutely just mind-boggling in some respects. And number two, Jay White is the future of wrestling. Number three, Jinder Mahal had a, is a better champion than Seth Rollins. Which championship? Jinder Mahal was a better WWE champion than Seth Rollins was Universal Champion. Okay, Universal Champion? Folks, I, uh... I hate to, I hate, uh, I, I hate to disagree uh, with, I, I hate to, well, I hate to agree, but I can't agree with that. I, I, I have to agree with that. General Hall was a better champ. At least he got heat. Moving on. By the way, fuck Jay White. Mm. Moving on. Uh, it's time. No, Jay White's the best. And now we're moving on to our second segment of the night, emails and comments. If you'd like to, blah, 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 blah. Moment, please. Dave! It's time for the emails, comments, and links. You can send them at the WrestleCast at gmail.com. Of course, the comments and the WrestleCast brought to you by this evening by OWE in Toronto. Their first show was on, uh, was on August 7th. Hopefully, if you went there, you enjoyed it. But it is, of course... Still uh, available uh, for the 10th. Tickets are still available for the 10th show at the Metropolitan at the Met in Toronto. Of course, the card is as follows that on your screen. El Lindemann taking on Brandon Cutler. Cutler. Uh, some of the matches featured uh, are, uh, like I said, El Lindemann and Brandon Cutler. T Hawk versus Daniel Garcia. Psycho Mike and Brett Banks take on SCU. I'm seeing you! Simon Guevara. And Simon Guevara taking Chao Kajia. It's at the Metropolitan. Uh, it's at the Metropolitan. It's at the Met in Toronto. That little theater and all that good stuff. Uh, tickets still available August 10th. It's in downtown Toronto. It's And it'll be it'll start ju- ju- in the afternoon. You, get, you go to that show. And it's just a short walk, I believe, from there. Scotiabank Arena for NXT. So, a double dose of live wrestling if you can. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to because of trade, because I've been told there might be train delays. But if you can make it, do it. I mean, come on. You know, that's, of course, uh, of course, there's plenty more independent wrestling out there today and tomorrow. So, this evening and tomorrow. So, Whatever you do, support your independent promotion as soon as possible. This time around, we do begin with our one email, as per usual, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only, T-Dub, you know it is. French! WrestleCast, 
for and congratulations for 10 years of existence we made it 10 years of WrestleCast, and it feels much better than 10 years of hypocritical slob like dsp shots fired anyway for those in the chat who has hasn't heard of me I've, i was listening to this podcast since day one and only made comments until well 20 episodes or so in and if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't have known no no about Matty J, Rappo, Diamond Ice 56, Z Meixner. Hope I'm spell I didn't spell it wrong. You spelled it correctly. Uh, Shintai, Curl, Bobbert, and so on. Anywho, I want to say thank you so much for the memories, the trolls, the nightmare fuels, and the Daves. And oh, hold on, I knew I had. <laughs> I gotta set this up here. There we go. Let me just put this back here. And, uh, and uh, this. Who's that at the door? <laughs> that was legit in the email, by the way. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done that bit. It's been long. It's been a while. Now I'm not going to cover Raw, SmackDown Live, or NXT, so if we've got two pay-per-views to deal with, let's get into it. NXT TakeOver Toronto, nothing much to say other than I'm looking forward to the three stages of hell between Gargano and Adam Cole, baby! And only, I think I want, the only thing I want is for Mia Yim to end the title reign of Ms. Baszler. Sorry, but it went too long. Summer Slam 2019, this pay-per-view. I bet it'll last five hours, and I got better things to do rather than watching it, but there's some matches I'm intrigued to look at. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some shenanigans with the 24-7 belt. Pre-show man I've had Tony Lorcan taking on Wonderbread Duke Drew Gulak. Give the win to Gulak since I see Lorcan more as a tag team champion with Danny Burch. Smiley Finn versus Yowie Wowie! I don't think the match will happen simply because Bray will destroy Finn before the match even starts, before choking him. Can I read the fucking thing? Thank you. I let you read it. Simply, I don't think the match will happen simply because Bray will destroy Finn before the match even starts, before choking him out, but the, with the mandible claw. But it'll establish it'll establish him as an unstoppable beast. You were saying? I was just saying. Yeah, we wowie. Thank you. That's it. U.S. Belt King. You're Richard. welcome. Tito wants to be Dave tonight, don't he? You are looking. You are fishing for a Dave. Or at least another one. U.S. Belt Ricochet versus AJ Styles. It would be weird to see AJ Styles looking uh, losing the belt to Ricochet just after winning it last month. I expect the good bros to cost the match. Dadberg versus Dolph Bob Zigpants. Oh, God. I didn't like the idea that a part-timer will get the win, but I would forgive if Dolph sells Goldberg at SummerSlam 2005 between HPK and the Kunster brother. Mama Stratisfaction versus Ashley Flair. Everybody sing along. Vince McMahon likes busted blonde women. Vince McMahon likes busted blonde women. Catching on. It is. It is. <laughs> Go ahead, Reniko. You've been throwing him around, anyways. Since, uh, since I can't imagine Charlotte losing to Trish, even though in the hometown advantage, it'll be good to send off and the better pacing, passing the torch. Unlike Alexa Bliss last year, I know she was injured, but the plan was for her to fish, face Trish one on one. Your boy, Maddie, versus. Colonel makes sweaty bollocks. The match I'm certainly looking forward to since Kevin needs to win against this uh, this bout against Shane. And I want I can imagine Kevin giving stunners to everyone uh, or even an F sank on Shane Shane. It won't happen, won't it? I mean if he hits an F five or I'm sorry, for Kevin to be an F sank, and he got it right in the email. It'd be it'd be awesome. I mean Owens versus Lesnar? Sign me up. I guess. No, do not destroy Kevin Owens with Lesnar. Don't do it. I don't think we're thinking the same thing we're thinking here. 
I don't trust WWE. That's my thinking. Fair point, but let me dream. Kevin Owens stunning the sh beating the shit out of uh, out of Brock Lesnar. It can happen. It it could, but only if someone were to convince Vince McMahon that would be the right move, and that would need one hell of a sell job. You need to be one hell of a salesman to pitch that one. SmackDown Women's Belt War Goddess versus the Queen of Hugs. The most forgettable feud possible since none of them are built strong. And it's a shame since I love Ember and Ember and Bailey. Bailey to retain the WWE Championship. Jamaican McCrazy Kofi versus I had it with this motherfucking snake. I had a joke a long time ago with Randall Orton, but since we're in the hashtag me too era, better not mention it. Prison joke. Anyway, it went full circle between Kofi and Randy, and now it's time for a payback. I expect Kofi to retain since Randall has has enough title reigns as it is. Ratings, ratings can be damned. Raw Women's Championship submission match: Queen of Cats versus Irish Sands. Natalia, sorry, but you're getting bet. Be, you're you got manhandled by Becky online and on TV. Even if you look, it, you look the shape of a can of pineapple to triggers to some bad memories for Becky. Anywho, this might be the best moment of introduce Chain of Baszler to the ring after uh, Lynch made Cat Nat Natty tap out. I remember those pineapple videos. Those are hilarious. They are. They are, actually. For one, uh, Shayna is a friend of Ronda. Makes sense. And two, she's a perfect new opponent for the man after she previously lost about the Mia. She, she uh, loses the belt to Mia Yim. Building towards Survivor Series of the Rumble where Becky will lose the size leaf to the Submission Wizard and can gloat about breaking the man. But that's just bad fantasy booking. Jam Belt Bork Laser versus A Massive Embarrassment. Quote, unquote. I'm aware of uh, Rollins being a dick online. I saw the interviews of him being a good corporate stooge. And people are backlashing him again. Uh, backlashing against him. Wouldn't be surprised if Rollins loses to Lesnar. Either way, we're screwed. No winners and losers this week. I hope you enjoyed these pay-per-views and pray the WWE don't own Fight TV, even if it's a rumor. Anyway, hope it'll last 10 more years and Godspeed to all of you. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, that's, uh, that's it. That, those... Or your emails and comments of the week. You can send them at the Russellcast at gmail.com. We shall return with our preview of SummerSlam Weekend Takeover and SummerSlam itself when we return. Do not go far. Now a word from our sponsors. Are you hugging kidding me? I don't give a hug. Bailey does not get bumped from a talk show. It's unhugging believable. Look, we ran over time. We sincerely apologize for everything. Oh, you apologize. Well, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry. You're a hugging buffoon. Get out of here. Go hug yourself. Are you hugging filming me? Hug you. You're hangry when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. There's an epidemic affecting thousands of young Canadians, a condition scientists are calling the munchies. I'm World Wrestling Federation superstar Chris Jericho, and I've joined forces with Taco Bell to fight this hunger. You can join our tag team. By making a donation of only $3.99, you'll receive three Taco Supremes and a drink. Act now, and together we can help young people like Todd pummel the munchies. This is WMOB Mobile, 12 on your channel dial and 12 in the TV ratings. So, who wants some sweet satisfaction? <laughs> WWE SummerSlam, coming soon to a TV near you. One scoop or two? <laughs> We're back here on the Russell Cast, presented by RBT Entertainment Podcasting Stuff. 
on Rich Entertainment, uh, Broken Infinite Account, Automatic.com, iTunes Podcast, and Places. Maddie and Tita celebrating 10 years of the Russell Cast. Uh, this is uh, August 9th, 2009, was the first show. And uh, what a world away! What a way! We're about to talk about two of four things happening with the Fed this particular weekend and all that good stuff. No, no, that's, that's all I'm going to say there. Shall we get to the thing? Do it! Let's do it! Get Let's to the pay view! We begin, ladies and gentlemen, with NXT TakeOver Toronto, but it should really be called Toronto 2, because it's their second TakeOver in Toronto. Both shows we're talking about, Scotia Bank Arena, formerly the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Car looks as follows. Starts with, actually... I need to say I called it, but I'm not, I'm not going to hit the popo button on this one, but I am going to call the. I say I called this. Their opener? Women's match. Candice LeRae taking on a newly minted heel in Io Shirai. Uh, yeah, this is definitely one that has been warranted. I've been asking for the longest time for them to give the women a non-title match on a pay-per-view because you need that in order to truly deep in your roster you need at least one non-title match in order to showcase hey there's more people on this roster than people competing for the championship so here we are finally and it's the perfect match to do so indeed indeed so candles are right Io Shirai. i love Io Shirai's new character i expect like what i see so win. far Speaking of the women, uh, speaking of the women's division, the championship, Shayna Baszler taking on Mia Yim for the NXT Women's Championship. Let's go, Mia Yim! And just to let you know how much a fan of I am of hers, and how long at least, um, I was actually in the crowd for one of her first matches back, oh. in, I think, like, like eight years ago. There's some history for you. Yeah, uh, let me just awesome. uh, look up the uh, date for He's looking it up. Now, while he's doing that, I read a lot of people saying that Shayna Baszler should retain. People don't like there's a style monster was thinking maybe me and Yim isn't ready for the thing. I'm like, you know, maybe just, you know, putting someone over would be just put the belt on the person, maybe? Could be the solution. I'm calling me Yim because at this point, Shayna's had the belt long, got long a goddamn enough. I'm like, Pull the fucking trigger already. So yeah, I'm calling me a yim as well. And T Dub is still looking for that date. At least I I think so. Currently yes, but I can't where is it? When would I could have sworn it happened around here? For some reason I'm not seeing it on cage match. And I could have sworn I I Come on, cage match. Don't do me dirty. Anyway. Uh, yes, I've been a fan media for a long time, and I'm really hoping that she uh, she gets the win here. Triple threat for the North NXT North American Championship. The Velveteen Dream defends against Roderick Strong and the Russell Cast's favorite wrestler, Beat Dunn. I expect the uh, the person I expect to win is the fuck boy Roderick Strong. <laughs> Keep the gimmick going. That's what I say. <laughs> you expect Roderick to straight. Who do you want to win? Who do you think will win? I really do think it's Roderick Strong because there's a certain theme that I'm going with other people that this this is going to happen. And you think Undisputed Era walks away with all the gold? Maybe. I sense the pattern. I I could see it going that way, but part of me wants to keep it on the Velveteen Dream. If for nothing else, he's one. He's doing wonders with the championship right now. But no, I could see. I, I can honestly see Roderick Strong. You know, we'll see what happens there. This is one of those. I'm like Roderick, maybe, but I'm calling Dream or done. Got to get. I have at least one babyface win. Tag team. All right. 
NXT Tag Team Championship, the Street Profits. And I've been misspelling profits. I, I, I spell the profits with an I, not E, but no, profits with the way it's spelled. Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford, they're taking on Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. Red Dragon back in the W in an NXT ring, by the way. Been a while. I expect Red Dragon to pick up the victory. By the way, we already saw Red Dragon back at the previous NXT takeover in that ladder match. That's true. That's true. So it really hasn't been a while, but I do expect them to get the W. For sure. As for much sure. as I love the Street Profits, they had an amazing ascension, but they're on and they're on main roster TV now. So it only makes sense. That's like the one. It's like they're already on TV. Uh, they're already back on TV. It only. It doesn't make sense for them to drop the belts anyway. So you know what? If they're gonna do it, at least put someone over on the process. Fish and O'Reilly, I'm okay with that. And then the main event evening, two out of three falls for the NXT Championship. Uh, the first fall will be a street fight. Actually, no, I think that the... Uh, I believe the actual uh, thing will be a straight wrestling match in the first fall. The second fall will be a street fight. The third fall, should it go there will be decided by William Regal at the time of the show. And I expect uh, many people are actually saying that third fall will be a triple threat match featuring Tommaso Ciampa, which I just don't see happening because... No, he took, he, he had a really he's, bad... not clear, he's not near cleared yet, number one. I mean, he's doing better. He's doing very well. But you people expecting Tommaso Ciampa, who... Had neck surgery at the big, at, at literally a few, a few literally weeks before WrestleMania weekend this year. I'm sorry, but he is gone. He is done for the year. So people There's expecting Tommaso Ciampa to come back, it'll be a fucking miracle. I'm gonna mark out. Don't get me wrong, but it'll be a fucking miracle if I see Tommaso Ciampa in that ring. There's only one person who could pull that off, and his name is indeed John Cena. And last time I checked, Tommaso Ciampa's name is not John Cena. Is he's still John recovering. Cena, he is still recovering. There is no doctor either in the Fed or outside of the Fed who will allow Ciampa to take bumps that early after in recovery from neck surgery. Yeah. So, Neck surgery, well, people. Think... The same shit that had Edge, Lita, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Folks, to those people who think it's going to be Ciampa, <laughs> no. No. Not so, gonna happen. So, what do you think the third fall is going to be? I've, I've heard rumblings of a steel cage, but a, one that would be too obvious because you would see the steel cage. And I'll be among the many people who will take pictures of that steel cage. But honestly, I could see a ladder match. That's the only way they could like have a surprise stipulation not be totally obvious. Because they be, here comes a ladder match. And they could just lower down the hook that you can just keep in the rafters and no one will be able to see it. Yeah, if it's unannounced, it only makes sense to make it a ladder match. And it's almost... It's almost even... NXT's original stipulation matter, uh, match. Anyway, so the they were never into stips. They were like, okay, the first stip match was a ladder match, so it only makes sense in that case. If it was to be a triple threat match, I just I can't see anyone who they could per, they could realistically add to the match. I mean, maybe Matt Riddle, but he's busy trolling Goldberg right now. Oh, that's right. He's not on the card. He's not even on the card. That's interesting. That's interesting. It is. That is interesting. It that is a thought. Interesting it is. It is a thought. But I refuse to even dignify the triple threat match any longer than that. Bro. Be a hell of a heel turn for William Regal, too. <laughs> uh, how That would be a heel turn? I mean, you know, you, you, it's a one-on-one -on -one match the entire time, and all of a sudden, Regal comes out. By the way, the third fall, triple threat. 
I thought enough of you two nannies in the ring, so I decided to go out and get myself some help. Bro! I can't whistle today, for God's sake. Have a nice night, sunshine. <laughs> but yeah, it probably will be a ladder match. And like I said earlier, Adam Cole to retain because at the end of the night, dripping with gold will be none other than the Undisputed Era, baby! Could happen, or Velveteen Dream and Dunn could win. And Undisputed Era is dripping with gold, but Roderick Strong still standing out. And there's that little narrative that you can push. You're trying to break up this group. How dare you? They've been tr they've been teasing that breakup since Mania Weekend. They can tease it a, 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 a way longer because Rock Strong needs that 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 North American title. He, he does. Give it to he him. Does. So give him what he wants. So that's why give him what I, he wants. So that's, really, why, really, really. that's why I said, "Why are you doing Spice Girls?" Because you made me. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't make you do jack shit. Anyway, that's why I said I could see Roderick Strong win, but I'm like, <laughs> over at the cost of Velveteen Dream? Like, oh God, they're going to they're gonna promote him to, oh God, no, please don't. Do not promote Velveteen Dream to main roster. You will kill him. Anyway, speaking of the main roster of Doom... Very next night, Sunday, August 11, 2019. From the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, Ontario, the very same building. Ten matches announced, all singles matchups, SummerSlam 2019. Clusterfuck of a buildup, thanks to scripts being torn the fuck up. But, the card sits as follows. This will be more than likely the pre-show match. Drew Gulak taking on Oni Lorcan for the Cruiserweight Championship. Keep it on Wonder Bread, I say. Agreed! Uh, we're going to go by order of what's been uh, 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 on the on the, uh, on the uh, Wikipedia, which has Trish, versus, uh, Trish Stratus versus Charlotte Flair next. I think it, the obvious is Charlotte's going to win. Yeah. Trish is going to have an extra retirement. And One of those. Over she, she had she had her retirement match. She won a retirement match back in 2006. I think it's one of those cases where she she's like she's I'm gonna put over this if this is my actual last match. I'm gonna put over the lady the lady in the robe. Makes sense. Ma it only makes sense. So yeah, Charlotte to win. Next up, Dolph the Jobber Ziggler taking on Oldberg Goldberg. That's worth. Goldberg's probably going to win in under 90 seconds, but what I would love to see happen is Goldberg goes for the spear, Dolph Ziggler immediately small package, one, two, three. Oh, God. <laughs> Just to hear the reaction of the Toronto oh, crowd. Oh, my tonight. God. If that happens, you're, you're going to... That crowd will, will not be... You will lose that crowd easily. I don't... You know, honestly, it's Toronto. I don't know what's going to happen. It's bizarre world, by God Almighty, bizarre world. I'm like, it's gonna be one of those situations. I don't know if I will contribute to the crowd or not. I just want to be a part of that crowd, just to be a part of that, just to be in that noise. But yeah, Goldberg, Ziggler, it's like Goldberg, Spear, Jackhammer, dead. Probably in about three hey, minutes devil. tops. Good for you to show up, and yes, that match is happening. That match is indeed happening. It was announced on Raw at the very last segment of Monday Night Raw, as a matter of fact. Yeah, great build up. It was actually, you know what, for for like what two looks to be two weeks notice, not bad for the build up actually. Yeah. Hey, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. Guess what, son? You're next. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> uh, AJ Styles Ricochet United States Heavyweight Championship. The champ is AJ Styles. I do not ex considering they're trying to well build up slash rebuild up depending on your opinion the OC styles to retain I could not agree more uh, I think that in order to truly build up the club as a threat keep the belts on 
Yeah. Gave the belt on Styles, and Ricochet can recover from that loss. It'll be a great match anyway. It's it, it could be if given enough time, this could be one of those. AJ Styles goes over NXT, uh, and uh, the and Ricochet will be over. Uh, next up, Finn Balor versus Bray the the Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Give Bray a win, please, please. Plus, Finn's probably got to take a couple months off anyway, so you know what? Bray Wyatt to win. That's what I'm saying. The... And then continue that victory in the next pay per view, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then before you know it, he's a star. Keep the momentum going. Keep put put win on Wyatt. That's all I gotta say there. Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. If Shane, if uh, Owens lose, lose, if Owens loses, he will quit WWE. Wham! Well, okay. Owens to win via all the stunners. I expect to see at least three stunners on on Shane McMahon, please. Owens will I'm win. Almost certain, Owens I'm almost will certain. murder Shane McMahon. No, 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 no. Fuck Kevin Owens. Kevin Steen will murder Shane McMahon. I imagine after all those stunners, you will feel satisfied with your ticket purchase. Oh, I'll be satisfied with my ticket purchase after the first, after the first night. You, I will be guaranteed there. Anyway, uh, I don't know why this is fourth down on the card, but what the fuck? Kofi Kingston retains the WWE Championship. Oh, wait a minute. Kofi Kingston defends. <laughs> The WWE Championship against Randy Orton. Yeah, I'm botching tonight, folks. No, no, you're right the first time. He'll retain because. Well, that's uh, true. <laughs> because well, I wanted I, to read I'm the broken. match verbatim before I made my prediction. It's it's it's, it's a formula there, but yeah, <laughs> as I if think, I didn't make it obvious. I don't think anyone needs to see a millionth roll tile run with Randy Orton. It this could be would this could be a dark horse match, though. It very much could be, but. I will say that another Randy Orton World Title run will just feel redundant. It is a, a World Title a Randy Orton World Title run is undesired. I think we could leave it at that. Very much so. I mean, just look what happened last time he was World Champion. People were so just blase with it that they were cheering when Gender won. It's true. I mean, it, it, it was backlash. They're just happy to anyone took the belt off Orton. To be fair. That's the power of Randy Orton. And it, it made everyone laugh and laughter and you, you and Chin celebrating and, and celebration and jubilation and stuff. Bobber wasn't happy. Well, fuck Bobber. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm kidding! Just for that, I'm going to make sure that you play a horror video game. Hey, deal still stands. Million bucks in my, in my pocket. I'll play that video game. Oh, you're going to play the video game. And you're going to do it for free. Fuck free. Bitch, I'm unemployed. I'm getting paid for my suffering. Anyway. It'll happen, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of suffering, I feel bad for those two. They did get, they got the short stick in promotion. Bailey versus Amber Moon for the women's champ for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey is uh, the champ. Uh when this first feud first started, I thought, oh, maybe Amber could win. But after the lack of buildup here, it's just hard to imagine that they would have a title change. Although it could still be a great match, but I just don't see a towel change happening. This will be Not one of those it. sleeper matches where it'll be good, but it's a case of I just sense five minutes and done, and I feel bad for the two who are excellent wrestlers and can pull a great match, but it's like, again, short end of the stick promotion-wise, and it just leads me to think they're probably going to get five minutes, which is like... Ah. Oh, it Pugsley says, well, fuck Bobbert is a fucking quote. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, you watch when I come back from uh, for, for a riff down in a couple... Uh, not this week, obviously, but next week. You know, Rob Bobber's going to eat me, make me eat shit over that. I don't think he's got that dirty style of fetish that you do. 
Mr. Shiza porn over here. Figure of speech, idiot. Come on. We've been doing this for what, seven years? I'm not allowed to be know subtle anymore. I man. don't know metaphors. Metaphors are foreign to me. No, metaphors would go over your head. Well, actually, you wouldn't be allowed to go over your head. You'd catch them and eat them. Because they're delicious. <laughs> and also, Batiste, a joke. Uh, Sam I mean, as on, on our uh, Wikipedia, I believe, is... Uh, it's, well, it's on Wikipedia. I don't believe it. It's up there. Becky Lynch versus Natalia, A submissions match for the Raw Women's Championship. I am happy in my head place. Is it because you were smelling a screw job in Canada? No. Because I've seen a lot of people speculate that could happen. I read that too. Have you folks? No. I. Of course, if we are in Canada, so that there's that lingering thought, but no. Come on, air in Canada. Let's get do it for all time's sake. God damn it. You know, Vincent Man's thinking that every time they go to Canada, every single time. If that happens, I'm, I'm getting in it. line for the for the mob that's gonna kill Vince McMahon. <laughs> I won't be first in line, but I'll be in that goddamn line. If that shit you know, happens, Maddie, you, Maddie, you know that every time they go to Canada, that that's what goes through Vince's head, and every one of the writers and agents has to stop him. You know that. Again. I'll be in line with. I'll be in that. I'll be in that line, waiting to kick Vince in the dick if that happens. I I I will not be first in line, but I will be in that fucking line. The but I, I, that needs to be in line is me when I kick him so hard in the groin. He never even has the thoughts of having sex again. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> Yo. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off to be elite. E E elite. Fair enough. I ex beyond the screw job bullshit. Can we just? I'm calling Becky the retain. Yeah, Becky to win. Yeah. Just, just I'm just nervous because it's a submission match in Canada, which le just legitimately has featuring more featuring a, a sibling of the Hart family. Yeah, like it's just like I all mean, the worst pieces of the puzzle are placed at the absolute worst I time. I mean, one, like, can for, one can be forgiven for having the conspiracy in your head in the first place. Mainly because they've gone to this well a million times already. And I'm like, if that happens, I'm like, you're gonna fuck up the pay-per-view if you do that. Because the crowd will not follow you. Yeah, Canadians are are still not happy about their screw job, and they especially don't like being reminded of it. We're fucking done with the screw job. Hell, I had no interest in the thing. I had no thing. I, this thing happened before I became a wrestling fan, but I am sick to death about the the retreads, especially when they did Breaking Point in Montreal that year. Oh yeah, that did happen, didn't it? It did, and it's still horse shit. I'm pretty sure I erased that whole pair of you from my mind because I don't even remember what happened there. Me neither, but I know it happened because well, they, they were in Montreal. Anyway, come on, it's Montreal. Let's give them the old screw job. They'll love it. Wikipedia is fucking up, data because they have Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins as the main event. It shouldn't, because we know it's gonna it fucking happen. Will. It'll be Bork Laser versus uh, Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Bork is a champ. <sighs> Just get the belt off Lesnar and keep it off of him for at least a good year and a half. You know the, what sucks? Can you, do that? you know what sucks? The fact that the the fact that he beat the shit out of Rollins and everything else. I don't see it happening. Oh. I hate to say it. I think Brock retains. Not because I want him to retain. Because Vince still has a fucking hard on for Brock Lesnar. Wow. Seriously, Vince, go see a doctor. It's lasted four years. Let alone four hours. Just put belt on Rollins, give him good opponents, and your product will be good. People will tune in. That's all you have to do. That's all it's they have to do, cost. but Vince has a punch shot for fucking shit it's for fucking shit up lately. Oh, I like Pugsy's uh what Pugsy's in the chat. 
Literally Vince. Hey, remember? Remember the controversy? Remember the thing? We did. We remember. We remember. We did it. We're doing the thing. We're doing it again. All of Canada is Mont is All of Canada is Montreal. Fuck. If that happens, I will tweet, fuck you, Vinny. I'm sure many people will. Mm -hmm. And uh, to God mode in the chat, no, I don't see Cena coming back at this point. No, preview. I think that Raw reunion thing was a one-off for now anyway. Yeah, he seems very happy in his current role of being a part-timer, which is fine because he's, he's earned He's more than earned it, let's be honest. You know, his yeah. body is probably all bruised to hell at this point, so yeah, he's, he's earned the nice I rest. I think he's just enjoying thing. going to the gym, making himself look good, and after that, not taking a bump. He's like, yeah, that feels nice. Yeah, it feels nice to just go to the gym because I want to be in shape, and not because I'm going to get my ass kicked for 20 minutes a night. That That's nice. Yeah. Nice to not do that. Also, I don't have to read terrible scripts that are handed in me by Vince McMahon. Well, come on, John. It's such good, good shit. shit. <laughs> anyway, so that's the card as it is. Obviously, Roman Reigns is not in it, but that could be added. There's like a ton of things because rewrites because fuck you, Vinny. So, oh my god, if he rewrites SummerSlam 90 minutes before they go to air, son of a bitch. Oh my god, if that happens, Vince has lost his fucking mind. I'm pretty sure if that were to happen, Triple H would just be off the distance like... Okay, any day now, he's going to kick the bucket. Uh, just be patient, Paul. Be patient. Uh. At this point, you say, fuck patience. I'm going to the board on this shit. But anyway. Uh, so that's it. So that's uh, TakeOver. Some stuff. Of course, they have Raw SmackDown, but we ain't previewing that shit. <laughs> I'll be well, in the never crowd. Preview, Ron. I'll be in the nose, please, but I will be in that crowd. Unless they tarp off half of the three hundreds, and then they say, "Hey, you, you go sit over here." It's like, "You, you, you, you sure?" So, yeah, okay, I'll do it. So, so all we got left here is some winners and some losers. And unlike the five hundredth, I'm not. You know, this is the tenth anniversary. I just wanted to keep it as a regular show. So, that being said, Tina, let's do some losers. Uh, Vince McMahon for constantly rewriting the shows, even right before they go to broadcast. Just stop. Just you're supposed to have this stuff finalized bef way beforehand. Like that's what your writers do. Stop taking their scripts and constantly reaping them up before you go to air. That's not helping. It's it's yeah. The shows have been better, but not, not thanks to you. Yeah, I got Vince McMahon as well because of what you just said. And if the rumors are true, fuck you, Vinny. Just fuck you. Fuck it up in the better wrestling like that. Let's do winners. My winner this week is Teal Piper for pursuing her dream of becoming a pro wrestler. I hope it all works out and she becomes a huge star. I, I think I think it, that makes sense. I got a list of, lo uh, of winners Oh, here. I got one other winner. Go. Uh, Nyla Rose for her interview on this week's Road to All Out. That was absolutely phenomenal. I must watch. Everyone, go out and watch it. It's agreed. A fantastic Absolutely movie. agreed. Just go and watch it. It's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, my winners, obviously, you mentioned Teal Piper. I will mention Teal Piper as well. Good for you. I hope. You know, Merde. That's, uh, that's uh, of course, yes, shit. But in, in uh, Quebec, in, uh, in Quebec theater talk, Merde it means it's, it's our way of saying break your leg in that case. Good luck. Uh,. Wrestling in general, because this weekend you're gonna be you're gonna get your fill. Uh, Adam B. Adam Belanger, the voice of C4 Wrestling and many other independent promotions in the Ottawa, uh, in the uh, Ontario and Quebec side of things. He uh, he's helping me out with the hotel stuff, so thank you, man, much appreciated. Uh, OWE for obvious reasons. Uh, Progress Wrestling, because uh, if if uh, Zach McGibbon who is in Toronto the entire week, the lucky SOB is correct. Progress is, prof is proper, probably provided the show, the in, in the indie show of the week. Because some of the reports, holy cow. Uh, Chris Jericho versus Matt Riddle. Okay, so Jericho and Matt Riddle are in a Twitter war. And Matt Riddle decides to do a video 
you know, talking shit like Mad Riddle would do. And Jericho's response to parody Matt Riddle's video. Headband, lack of daisical video, and everything. I was on the floor laughing my ass off. It's just a shame this will never lead to an actual match. That sucks. I mean, it's a contractual thing, but god damn it. That was awesome. That's all I'm going to say. Well, all those quirky little things. That's all it is. Matty D. Uh, our friend Matt D'Angelo, who sometimes you see him as Indie Fan 1 in our chat room every once in a while. He's in Toronto as well. He arrived earlier today. And I am... And uh, here's the picture for you folks in the... In the uh, Tita has seen the picture already. And uh, my only thought... Simply put, that's Triple H. That's Stephanie McMahon. First thought when I saw that. <coughs> jealous. Yes, I am jealous of that. And for those wondering, uh, that was a meeting greet that happened earlier today, and uh, tickets for us were $250 a piece, with proceeds going to Connor's Cure. So, but Matty D gets a winner, not for that picture, but because he explained, uh, he told Triple H and Stephanie of Fighting Back 9. And Rinico, it's, it, the echo is because T-Dub doesn't hear the buttons when I, as I hear them. It's not like Shades, Shades is production. I got a break, so I want T-Dub to hear the things. So if you don't like it, suck it. Anyway, back to the thing. Matty gets a winner. Matty D. He gets a winner because he told uh, Triple H and Stephanie of the um, of fighting back nine, and he got a eight uh, a, a eight by ten signed by Trips and Steph, and he will donate said picture to auctions to raise money for the Canadian Cancer Society at Fighting Back Nine. So Matty D gets a winner because that is a good fucking idea. <laughs> T-Dub's lack of... There we are here. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I was just letting you talk. Yeah, I agree. It's a great thing. Fighting back is a great cause, and it's great that he was able to get this. So, paying to, to support a cause, to support another cause, charity wins. That's awesome. Bill Goldberg, because he's going to kill the shit out of, out of Dolph Ziggler, whether it's official or not, Dolph is eating a spear and a jackhammer. Poor Dill. <laughs> yeah, Dolph Ziggler. You know, jobber. Jobber. Anyway. Rest and in finally, peace, Mr. Dill. <laughs> and finally, MJF. <laughs> If you follow me on Twitter, you will know exactly why. Quote. Oh, actually, I need to, actually, I do need to get the quote out, actually. I forgot to get the thing out. Professionalism. I'm swimming in something. Let me, let me, let me get the thing. Let me get the thing out here real quick. I need to get the thing so I could read it for you. There we go. There we go. All, okay, quote from MJF on Twitter. All versions of Power Rangers suck. You are an idiot for liking it. My response? Heel of the year. I will not be argued on this point. Clearly he's a Super Sentai purist. <laughs> you, you know what? Part of me is, wouldn't be surprised, but the other part of me is going, maybe not. I don't know. At this point, it is what it is. He's the type of person that's like, that is 100% subs over dubs, won't even entertain the other side. <laughs> now, at this point, the amount of shit he got, the amount of heat he got for that one tweet, good lord. So, heel of the year, period. That being said, hey, Tito, 
Thanks for being around for around the seven years or the ten years of the show. Woohoo! I'm surprised I lasted this long. <laughs> Thanks. I guess. Yeah, I th I, for some reason I thought uh, I'd eventually get kicked off for saying something stupid. Well, it hasn't. Well, you have said stupid things, but you haven't been kicked out yet. Well, I'm glad <laughs> I haven't. Yeah, it's. I, I'm. I'm still around. I think, <laughs> unless this is some sort of weird fever. Yeah, some weird fever dream where this is a rib. <laughs> well, no, this to is Ring not a rib. Honor? This is not a rib. Yet. <laughs> Hashtag welcome to Ring of Honor. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway. Uh, you, you are... Uh, am I wrong? You got a new video out. I'm uh, working on a new video at the yeah. moment. Yeah. My latest video, King of Coliseum 2 review, is uh, currently out, but I'm currently working on a new one. It'll be on my YouTube channel within the next three days, hopefully. So be on the lookout for that. Of course, if you want that early, patreon.com slash Reviews. A little bit of me towards his way gets you some early access to that new video of his. Of course, you want to support me as well. PayPal.me slash MetaJ316. Donations are, are not necessary, but always welcome. You can follow us on Twitter at MetaJ316 and at uh, TWK Official. I'm also on Instagram at MetaJ316. And of course, merchandise. Merchandise, all of course. Merchandise. Streamlabs.com slash RVT Entertainment slash merch. We have all sorts of stuff and a uh, limited edition Ranger recap tote bag. So if you want some geek stuff and plug our show at the same time, it is available for you uh, for a limited time uh, while our supplies last, of course. Of course, as we always say, buy the shirt and tote bag and all that good stuff. Of course, you want to send some uh, emails to russellcast at gmail.com and all that good stuff. Thank you for 10 years. Honestly, it's... You don't think of it as, like, something that'll last uh, a year. It's just, for me, it's like... It's like, it's something to do every Friday. And I still yeah, love doing uh, it. Yeah, I've, uh... Been a host for seven years, and I think I've been a fan for, like, eight and a half. It's still a fun show to do. Also, for those wondering... Yeah, no Tuka Riffs, because I'm in Toronto. Like, watching wrestling. So, duh. Hopefully the show is good enough to where uh, Easy and Shades will not be angry at you. I ought to Dave you for that. Well, I'm just saying, hope the show is good enough to where it ex where, you know, it makes sense for you to be away from Tucker Rips. Because we've seen some bad Summer Slams. We've that is very true. That is very true. But, uh, yeah, that'll be it for us. Thank you very much for tuning in and all that good stuff. And thank you for 10 years. Those of you who have been around for all 10 of them, including Front Otaku, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know there are some bad spots. Not every show is the best one ever, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm being sad on behalf of my good buddy, TWK. Until next time, this is TWK of TWK Reviews telling you to work your... Gimmick! My name is Manny J. Reminding you to help professional wrestling support independent promotion as soon as possible. Next Wednesday, 9 p.m. will be our next show. Of course, it'll be posted as up there as soon as I possibly can, though I will tell you, it'll probably be happening Thursday. But thank you very much for tuning in. Hey, Toronto! Wait for me! I'm coming! Phrasing boom! Good night, everybody! Bye, everybody! Bye! You want to play 21? Well, I got 22. 
I, I understood that reference. Oh, what the fuck are you doing here? This is my one week off. I'm going on holiday.